Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, today, I'll try to uh, present to you uh, how can we uh, implement .NET Core or migrate from uh, previous versions of .NET to .NET Core. And instead of uh, doing this talk uh, purely uh, theoretically, I created a small project, which I'm going to demo at the end of this talk. Uh, basically, uh, Microsoft created a mess, uh, starting with .NET Core 3. Uh, they realized uh, halfway through that they needed to combine all .NET frameworks inside uh, a single version. So .NET Core 5 is basically the savior and uh, the starting point for the unified plan of uh, Microsoft. Uh, so again, uh, let me just go to the first slide. We had .NET Framework, which is uh, the latest version is uh, 4.8, I believe. Then we have uh, .NET Core, which is uh, from 1 until 3.1. Then we have .NET Core 5, which is uh, not the latest version. Right now we have .NET 6 as well coming. So it's a, a little bit confusing. And uh, the aim of this talk is to basically simplify uh, uh, Microsoft's plan uh, on how to use .NET and answer some of the critical questions uh, that might come to mind when uh, .NET developers are trying to uh, uh, plan ahead their uh, next migration or ne their next upgrade. Uh, so what is Microsoft plan exactly? Uh, as I mentioned, to, to unify all .NET versions into one version. Uh, Again, rest in peace, .NET Framework <laughs> used to be good uh, while it lasted. Of course, .NET Framework is not uh, obsolete uh, yet, at least. It will still be supported for a long time to come. But uh, for now, uh, the plan is uh, uh, as mentioned in the slide. 3.2, .NET Core 3.2 will be migrated into .NET 5 and .NET 6. .NET uh, Framework will, uh, is uh, declared feature complete and uh, no more uh, new features will be added to it, only bug fixes and only major bug fixes at that. .NET Core 5 will be called .NET 5 and uh, this is uh, just simply a semantic uh, change, uh, nothing uh, critical. For me, it's still .NET Core, but many people will uh, prefer to call .NET 5. And uh, last but not least, .NET Core 4 is, uh, has been a victim uh, because of the naming convention. Uh, because as, you, as I mentioned, the .NET uh, framework is right now standing at 4.8. And then uh, if we use .NET Core 4 for the newest version, then people might uh, uh, confuse it between uh, .NET Core and .NET framework. So basically .NET Core 4 is, uh, will never exist. Uh, this is regarding naming uh, convention and uh, how to, uh, what is the migration plan for Microsoft? And the real question is uh, for existing .NET uh, developers. Uh, what is .NET Core? For those who are too busy uh, researching .NET Core, uh, this is the, uh, let's say the simplest answer you can find. It's basically a fresh start for Microsoft. Microsoft uh, has been supporting leg legacy software, uh, legacy software for a long time, and they wanted to begin anew. Uh, .NET Core is basically their attempt at fixing their previous mistakes. So it's a chance to port all lessons learned for the past uh, 10 years, and then come up with uh, a better solution that is cleaner less uh, dependent on legacy code and more focused on uh, new features and uh, supporting new developers. So all of this uh, together actually lowers the barrier of entry for new developers because uh, .NET uh, framework uh, to execute or to perform one, uh, one task, there are maybe 100 ways to do it uh, using the .NET framework itself. I'm not talking about uh, pure logic, I'm talking about tools that are built in inside .NET Framework. So there are many legacy methods and uh, classes that are being basically uh, removed or plucked out from .NET 
and only the most necessary uh, uh, features are being migrated to .NET, to .NET Core. So this is the main question. It's basically a fresh start for Microsoft. It's faster, easier, better, and uh, built on, to, on the top of uh, the shoulder of the giant, which is .NET Framework. Uh, so for those who are asking, uh, okay, I'm working with .NET 4.5 or 4.7, uh, what, what is the uh, immediate or the uh, uh, main benefit that I will receive if I migrated my current project to .NET Core? For me personally, I think cross-platform development is the main advantage that you will get when you migrate to uh, .NET Core. Basically, you can deploy your uh, .NET project on, uh, to Linux, Mac, and Windows without any problems. Uh, the same code base uh, can be uh, reused between these uh, platforms. Uh, the second uh, advantage, which I think is more relevant to us right now, which is uh, support for microservice infrastructure. Uh, microservice infrastructure has been a hot topic lately. It's not for everyone, I believe. Uh, only certain uh, uh, certain cases benefit truly from microservice infrastructure. But let's talk about dockerization of application, which is uh, is, is not mainly used. Uh, is, uh, can be used uh, for production and development purposes. So I think this is uh, the most uh, critical feature that you might find useful for uh, developers who are working, working locally. You can dockerize your .NET Core project from the get-go. So when you create the template for the, the .NET Core project, you can uh, just check a flag for the dockerization or support for Docker. Then you can implement uh, Docker uh, as you see fit inside the configuration file. So these two alone, I think, are good reason. But on top of that, you get high performance uh, higher, at least higher performance than .NET uh, Framework, uh, which can be, um, it depends on, of course, on your uh, code, but it can reach up to 30% improvement in speed. So for uh, high load uh, and intensive real-time applications, this is a major advantage. And I think it's, an, it's enough reason by itself to uh, encourage you to at least consider .NET Core and migrating to .NET Core. Uh, last but not least, uh, better support for .NET, .NET version isolation uh, comes to mind the uh, virtual environment in Python for Python developers. We have uh, previously, we didn't have anything similar to it in .NET uh, other than virtualization. Uh, right now you can use uh, uh, isolation also from the, from, uh, 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 the beginning of the project. Uh, when you publish it, it's the project itself and all its rela all its environment is packaged with it. Uh, and you can de basically deploy that to any uh, uh, server you'd like without worrying about uh, the uh, SDK is installed on that server or not. So it's a major advantage for me and uh, for many developers actually. Uh, it's an ease of mind uh, and quality improvement. Uh, especially when debugging, because in development machine, things can get messy, really. And you want to uh, uh, make your development uh, environment as clean as possible. So this surely helps. So those are the uh, four main uh, reasons to migrate to .NET Core. OK, for uh, uh, people already, the developers already using uh, .NET, uh, they want to start a new application right now, or a new project. And they are still debating whether uh, .NET 5 should be the targeted uh, framework or the targeted version, or they should stick to .NET framework. And uh, I believe uh, the answer for this is you have to choose .NET 5. Because think of it this way. Uh, you can delay it, of course. Uh, .NET framework will be supported for a long time. But uh, 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 if you start migrating from now, by the time you are finished, .NET 6 will be already published. And uh, uh, .NET 7 may be already planned. So you'll be, uh, basically, you'll be late in your migration. So if you start now, maybe you'll make it before .NET 6 is released. And I think it's released now, but it's still uh, under development. 
uh, or under beta. Uh, so uh, the sooner you migrate, the better. And we have to, re to remember that .NET Core is basically, uh, or .NET 5 uh, is basically Microsoft's uh, new baby. So uh, Microsoft will try to uh, put all development efforts inside .NET Core. They will uh, release new features and new bug fixes for it. Uh, the bulk of their development efforts will be concentrated on it. So the sooner you migrate, the better. And uh, of course, this debate was uh, more prevalent uh, maybe one year ago when .NET Core 3.1 was uh, the latest version. Back then, it was really a critical question because if you didn't, uh, if you waited until .NET 5, migration will become much harder for you. So if you migrate from .NET Framework to .NET uh, Core 3.1, migrating from 3.1 to 5 was basically changing a single line of code and checking your dependencies. That's all. No need for uh, major changes. So uh, it's, uh, the, the short answer is the sooner the better. Uh, okay, from experience, uh, because I'm responsible of migrating one uh, project right now from .NET Framework to .NET Core uh, 5. So uh, what, what can we expect basically? Uh, what, what is the migration process? Is it painful or not? I, I can assure you that it will take time if the project is uh, big, especially if it, if it contains many legacy uh, packages Nuget package, packages or uh, dependencies, then it will take time from you to find uh, a better alternative to these packages, or uh, hopefully you'll find the version that is uh, already compatible with .NET 5. So that's the, I think that's the main point you need to uh, consider or to check first before uh, uh, checking your uh, uh, code compatibility itself. So uh, checking Nuget packages uh, then uh, uh, checking your uh, uh, dependencies, if any uh, legacy dependencies are needed or, needed or not. Then uh, I think uh, in, in terms of publishing, so uh, you need to consider that right now with .NET Core, we have Kestrel, which is the built-in server. So you can uh, choose uh, two modes, which is in-process uh, publishing and out-of-process publishing. Uh, and there is a hybrid mode, I think, as well. So this is in terms of publishing. Those are the three main points. Uh, other than that, your C-sharp code itself, the business, business logic itself, 90% uh, of it will be migrated without any issues. So uh, you just need to find the... Uh, for example, link, link your queries and uh, uh, your uh, business logic written in C-sharp, this, this needs no uh, migration plan at all. Uh, you just need to uh, make sure that when, you, when you're using a specific feature, you find uh, related to .NET framework, I mean, you find the equivalent for it in .NET Core. So this is in terms of migration. Uh, to be honest, uh, this uh, talk might be boring for some of you who are not interested in, in .NET Core. So I present to you this slide, which is, I hope that uh, will be uh, the main uh, thing you benefit from this code, uh, from this talk. Uh, I included in this slide the, the uh, let's say, the bulk or the concentrated uh, uh, research that I did which contains the uh, most prevalent links related to this talk. And I believe that if you went through at least four of these links, uh, you'll be able to understand .NET 5 more, and it will be of great benefit to you. Uh, so this code is basically a summary of these links. Uh, and uh, also I, include, I included bonus uh, uh, links in the bottom, at the bottom here, uh, which is uh, related to publishing .NET uh, Core, which I did just before this talk. I wanted to make it more interesting. And so I published the, my uh, sample project to DigitalOcean and I'll uh, demo, uh, give a demo right now. So uh, that's it in terms of uh, the main uh, theoretical part of the presentation. The GitHub uh, for the code is here. Uh, I'll share the, uh, the repo link uh, in the chat, inshallah. And uh, I believe I finished on time. 
for change. Thank you so much, Anas. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. welcome. If anybody I, has any yeah, questions. I, uh, I talked with uh, Majid regarding the five extra minutes. <laughs> no, so you did a really I, good job with them? the time. So you'll yeah, take five more I minutes, Anas. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes, uh, just let yes, us please. clarify something, Alhain. Uh, you have yeah. two more minutes from your official time. Uh, then we will yeah. go uh, in a break uh, period, but you can take five minutes from the break time. So yes, uh, thank you. anyone who wants to go on a break, we will end at 3.15. So you can come back at 3.15. Anas will continue his session. Go ahead, Anas. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the uh, project I was talking about. This project, I uh, this is basically an unopinionated zero configuration .NET Core project that contains the bare minimum, but yet it contains enough functionality for you to uh, understand the uh, cycle of .NET Core. So from uh, uh, the request life cycle and how to deploy it, uh, to deploy the project. So here we have uh, the, the key files here are uh, uh, sample APIs, which contains the API logic, uh, startup, which, is, which contains startup configuration, this is this startup is built on top of program.cs, which is the entry point of the application itself. And then finally, the data access layer, which contains uh, SQL uh, uh, methods or functions that are required to uh, perform simple CRUD operations. So here in this project, if I uh, run it locally, can go here to the main page. It contains two pages. So uh, the landing page and the demo page. So this, this demonstrates how you can implement simple razor pages, they call it in .NET Core, how you can implement uh, uh, simple HTML pages that are uh, server side rendered, by the way. So you can include server-side logic in these pages, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, I only included uh, simple HTML uh, code. So if we go to the demo page, we have a simple, uh, how can we describe this page as, uh, if you know uh, Postman, for example, you, ha you have the documentation part of Postman where you can execute uh, queries uh, in the client itself. So this is basically, <laughs> Uh, a similar uh, concept. So here we can, uh, we have an object or a resource, which is users. We can uh, execute uh, a query against it that will retrieve all uh, data from the server. Then we can retrieve a user by ID, for example, which is common. So here we retrieve uh, one user called Do. Then we can add a new user, maybe can execute and then it will retrieve the added user, which is Hamlet in this case. We can update Hamlet later to change na to its name to uh, maybe Rami. We can retrieve all user users again. And then we can delete a user. And it's deleted. So here I performed uh, the, let's say 60% of CRUD operations that are needed in any application. And the code for it is basically this, only this file. Uh, of course, uh, there are some bad practices here, uh, but uh, I tried to make it simple as simple as possible. So you can uh, just uh, ignore the bad practices for now, for the sake of simplicity. Uh, I can't explain everything here, but uh, this is, uh, it's called route to code logic. So instead of using uh, classes and all of this stuff, we are using simple class here to perform our API requests. And this code will be, I think, interesting for most of you because I'm using here something new that I found interesting, interesting a new feature in SQL Server, which is JSON clause starting from SQL Server 2016 and above. And this is basically, um, uh, talk, uh, the client is almost directly talking to the database in some sense. And the published project can be found in two places. One on uh, 
digital ocean and the other on a sim another uh, link i'll post also on chat but it's basically just to demonstrate that you can publish on two platforms with the same uh, code base thank you all for the uh, for attending this uh, session and uh, if you have any question i'll be available until the end of this uh, uh, meeting uh, until the end of bar camp and uh, yeah thank you again Afianes, there's a question for you in the yeah, chat. Okay. Why not use yeah. Entity Framework? I, of course, of course you can use it. Uh, Entity Framework 6 is supported in .NET Core, uh, but uh, uh, the, the question, I can't see it, one second. Uh, only that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's available. You, of course you can use it and uh, uh, in this uh, sample, actually, uh, in the code, you can go back to, uh, but I removed it. Uh, it's basically one version of the application that, I'm, uh, that I built here. Uh, I was basically going to Entity Framework, then I stopped because I thought it might be, you know, not uh, user-friendly for most of people. Uh, so I didn't include it in the source code, but you can definitely use Entity Framework and especially Entity Framework 6 is supported out of the box in uh, .NET Core. Uh, yeah, but if you mean something else, please uh, clarify. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you have any more questions regarding .NET Core, regarding uh, migration, uh, I don't know if, if if you, I think when you see the code, you'll have more, many questions <laughs> as well. So I'm sticking around uh, until the end of the Barcamp event, inshallah.